Hello and welcome to your dose of daily outrage from Union Solidarity International. Today is Monday the 2nd of September and I'm coming to you live from Glasgow, Scotland. And of course today is Labour Day in the US and Canada. So for our fellow workers, brothers and sisters across the water, solidarity and we hope you're having a really good day off from work. Now. Labor Day in the US and Canada is always held in the first Monday of September, which is different from the rest of the world. The rest of the world International Workers' Day is held on the 1st of May, and it's held then to commemorate the Haymarket Affair in 1886 when workers in Chicago protested and demonstrated for an eight hour working day. Um, there was a riot, there was a conflict, and as a result, a number of workers were killed by the police. They were later executed and hung by the police. And May the 1st is used to commemorate that, that massacre and that attempt to put down workers' struggle. And the reason that that day isn't recognized in the US is precisely to make it less militant and precisely to depoliticize the day and make it a day of celebration and rest rather than a day when workers remember their collective struggle and also the sacrifices they've had to make to win the changes that we've seen in the world, including the eight hour day. However, despite this, there has been a real uprising in the US of workers who are not prepared to accept the widening gap between their aspirations and what society offers them. And it's been really, really inspiring. And we've seen particularly the most vulnerable and the most marginalized and the most precarious workers in the US taking the most inspiring action. Um, we've seen agricultural workers in the uh, coalition of Emilaki workers, we've seen warehouse workers, we've seen particularly Walmart workers who across the country have taken really, really inspiring industrial action. This is important because Walmart is the world's third biggest employer after the Chinese and US military and the world's biggest public sector employer. And it's a very, very massive organization and it drives down wages across the US and across the rest of the world and it also drives down the, the, the amount of money that's paid to farmers and uh, for these workers in America to stand up to Walmart is really really significant. We've also seen and reported on this quite a lot last week the inspiring walkout by fast food workers in 58 cities across the US and this seems to be gathering real momentum in the US because of the fact that uh, jobs in the fast food industry which pay very badly a generation ago, even less than a generation ago, a decade ago, it was largely seen as, as work for young people, for students who needed a bit of extra money while they were studying. They were entry level jobs, they were not permanent. And what we're seeing more and more of is people having to support families on these jobs and having to do uh, more than one, people having two or three jobs and really, really struggling to make ends meet at the same time as the executives who own these com companies are making huge amounts of money and people are saying enough is enough this is not possible and this is not right it is absolutely not fair and not just that in this nation the US which is supposed to be uh, so economically powerful and at the forefront of creating a better society for its citizens that people can work full-time their whole lives and not have enough money to live on it's absolutely not right and workers in the US are standing up and taking action and they're demanding to be paid better and we absolutely stand with them and say that your struggle is inspiring and on this Labor Day in particular we'd like to send out this message to you that uh, you're inspiring the rest of us, you're inspiring the rest of the world, you have some of the you have really terrible labor laws in that country and your unions have been weakened by attacks by the government and you haven't let that stop you, you are fighting back and uh, it's an inspiration to workers everywhere to see that fight back from precarious workers because it makes us realize that in our own countries, whether we're facing zero hours contracts or unpaid internships or all the other horrific things which uh, our governments are forcing on us to roll back our terms and conditions, that it really, really is worth fighting back because when you fight back, you can win and you can stop the race to the bottom. There is also uh, some interesting, there's a lot of interesting things happening in the labor movement in the US at the moment. And uh, I've spoken about um, some, of the, some of the recent industrial action that's happened. One of the other interesting developments which has been happening over the, over the past few years is the, uh, the challenges to the main federation, the AF, AFL-CIO, uh, a few years ago through the formation of an alternate federation, Change to Win. And there've been a lot of um, 
interesting developments there. One of the most recent surprising developments is the disaffiliation of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union. Uh, the ILWU is a, a, a West Coast dock workers union uh, and it's a, it has a militant history. It's well known for its militants. Uh, uh, members of the ILWU uh, opposed the Iraq war and they took part in Occupy Oakland demonstrations and uh, they have a much more radical tradition than some of the, the official US labor movement does. And they have disaffiliated for a number of reasons, but one of them is uh, through, they, they claim the AFL-CIO has uh, too close links to the Obama regime and, and uh, hasn't fought uh, strongly enough for workers' rights. So we're interested to watch that development, but we are also concerned because we think that labor unity is absolutely essential. And one thing that we're learning uh, across the world is that dividing workers is a really, really good way for bosses and governments who are trying to ensure austerity to get their way. And we need to do whatever we can to keep, to keep our forces united. Uh, just briefly, to bring us back to the UK, uh, it is worth mentioning something which is happening in the UK right now, which is a, another assault on, on democracy and on freedom of speech. And that is a, a bill which the Conservative Party is putting through Parliament called the Transparency of Lobbying, Non-Party Campaigning and Trade Union Administration Bill. And it claims to be an anti-lobbying bill. Of course it isn't, because the corporate lobbyists are... Uh, not under any, there's, there's nothing to stop their lobbying. For example, the Tory election advisor, uh, Liz, uh, Linton Crosby, is uh, able to lobby on behalf of big tobacco and private health healthcare firms and also some aspects of the Syrian labels. Nothing uh, in that bill is going to stop his activities. What it is designed to do is stop the activities of trade unions uh, in doing political campaigning and also charities. And in particular, there is a provision in that bill which caps the amount of money that can be spent on political campaigning in the year before a general election. And that doesn't mean campaigning for a political party, just campaigning on issues which are relevant to the election. So if, for example, a big charity like Oxfam or um, uh, Greenpeace or a number of other big uh, charities was campaigning on an issue that um, the Conservative Party had as part of their election manifesto, that would be considered electioneering and they could be fined for that. Uh, it's the same with trade unions. Trade union, it, it, it's designed to stifle trade unions' ability to interact with the democratic process and to have their say at the election time. And it really, really is another attack on democracy from the Tories. And so we really, really need to rally uh, around this and make sure that this, this bill is defeated because we have seen so many attacks on democracy in this country. This, this government is not popular and it's having to use all these, uh, all these laws and these, these attacks on our right to communicate in order to bolster its power. Once again, solidarity to workers in the US and Canada on Labor Day. We hope you're having a wonderful restful day. Uh, it's wonderful to have a day off. And uh, thank you for listening to or watching this dose of daily outrage from Union Solidarity International.